Hello and welcome to getting started with Amazon EMR series. My name is Dinbandu Prasad. I am a senior analytics specialist at AWS focused on big data technologies like Amazon EMR. In this demo, I am going to walk you through Amazon EMR and AWS Lake Formation integration. Beginning with Amazon EMR 5.26, you can launch an EMR cluster that integrates with AWS Lake Formation. This feature is currently in public beta. Now let's look at the topic we are going to cover today. First of all, I'll begin with an overview of AWS Lake Formation. Then we will dive deep into how data access works in Lake Formation. Amazon EMR and AWS Lake Formation support SAML 2.0 based federation with third party providers such as Microsoft Active Directory Federation Services, Auth0, and Okta. I will walk you through this integration architecture and demo using Apache Zeppelin and Okta as identity provider. AWS Lake Formation is a managed service that simplifies setting up, securing, and managing data lake. It helps you discover, catalog, cleanse, and secure data in Amazon S3 data lake. Other AWS services and third-party application can also access data through the services shown. Integrating Amazon EMR with AWS Lake Formation provides permission model that enables fine-grained access to data stored in data lake through simple grant and revoke mechanism. It enables federated single sign-on to EMR notebooks or Apache Zeppelin from your enterprise identity system that is compatible with SAML 2.0. To begin with, you set up and control user access to resources such as databases or tables using AWS Lake Formation policies. When a principal attempt to run a query in Amazon EMR on the data from Lake Formation, Amazon EMR requests temporary credential for data access from AWS Lake Formation. Lake Formation returns temporary credential allowing data access. Amazon EMR sends the query request to obtain the data from Amazon S3. Amazon EMR filters and returns the results based on the user permission defined in Lake Formation. Now that you understand how EMR and Lake Formation provide access to data, let's look into how integration with identity provider works. First, an unauthenticated user is authenticated using organization's identity provider sign-on page. Identity provider generates a SAML authentication response that includes assertions that identify the user and includes attributes about the user. The proxy agent enables successful user login, coordinating temporary credentials with AWS Lake Formation and Secret Agent. When the user runs a Spark job by using EMR Notebook or Zeppelin, the record server calls the Secret Agent to obtain temporary user credential. The record server reads and filters data from Amazon S3 based on the policies defined in Lake Formation. Here is an overview of the integration step. Firstly, you need to register trust relationship between your identity provider and Lake Formation. For this demo, I am using Okta as my identity provider. Then you grant permission to Active Directory user to access tables and columns on data lake on S3 using Lake Formation. Finally, configure EMR security and launch EMR with that security configuration. Using Lake Formation, I'll grant fine grain access to select only limited columns from customer table and select all columns from web page and web sales tables. This user will not have any access on any other table on Data Lake. EMR developer will only be able to fetch tables and columns on which they have permission they will get access denied exception if they try to access tables on which 
they don't have permission now let's look at the database tables and permission in lake formation using aws console i have registered my s3 data lake location in lake formation in this data lake i have defined a database called tpc for this demo we are going to focus on top four tables Let's look at the permission for each of these tables. EMR developer is an AD user. This user has permission to select all the columns in web page table. Let's look at the other tables as well. On the item table, EMR developer does not have any permission. So when the user try to select on this table, he will get an access denied exception error. On web sales table, EMR developer user has permission to select on all the columns. On customer table, EMR developer has permission to select on only four columns. Now let's test these permissions using Apache Zipplin. I have a EMR cluster already running with Apache Zipplin. It is configured with lake formation security. Using the EMR cluster master public DNS, DNS login to Apache Zipplin. You will be redirected to your identity provider single sign-on. Provide the EMI developer username and password and you will be authenticated using your identity provider. Once authenticated, you will be redirected to Apache Zeppelin homepage. I have a notebook already created with Apache Zeppelin. Let me clear the output from the previous run. In this notebook, I have SQL statements to demonstrate fine grain access control permission using lake formation. In the first statement, I am checking the databases on which EMI developer has permission. Then I am doing a count on my web page table. Since I have the select permission on web page table, I'll get the desired result. Next, I am doing a join between the web page table and the web sales table to get an aggregation of the tax paid by site ID. Again, I have the required permission that is the select on all the columns on both the tables so I get the desired result. Next, I'm trying to do a select on the table for which I don't have permission. As expected, since I don't have permission in lake formation on that table, I'll get an access denied exception. Finally, in lake formation, EMI developer has permission to select only four columns from customer table. So when I execute query with a select all columns, I only get those four columns in my output. This concludes our demo today. In this demo, I showed you how fine grain access control works with Amazon EMR and AWS Lake Formation.